welcome back to Center Stage with Jake Majors, the center, of course. If people don't realize how clever that name actually is, and it was created by the fans. They came up with really creative names back when we were naming the show, I want to say like a month ago. It was like Center Stage of Jake Majors. What was it? Jake in the middle? Majors in the middle. Majors in the middle. I did like that. And I forgot the other one, but they were good. Yeah. And I think that yours is the most creative. Center stage for Jake Majors because he is a center. What about everybody else's? What's what's DeMarion's? DeMarion's is the demo show. Keandre's is snack time. Xavier is the Xavier Worthy show. No, it's not. Xavier's is X Factor. Jordan oh. Winnington is just the Jordan Winnington show. I like snack time. They are good. I like them a lot. I like snack time. That's my favorite. Snack time is also my favorite. It's just, I like the play on words. I always like stuff like that. Even in like musical lyrics, I like to like pick up on it like, oh, okay, that's what you meant. (laughs) So please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the Orange Bloods Texas Football YouTube channel. Jake, I haven't seen your face for like a whole month. That's how it feels. You're exaggerating. <laughs> That's how it feels. Yeah. How was your bye week? I was good. Uh, just, you know, we still practice, stuff like that. This was a good time to step away from football and just get our bodies back, do as much recovery as possible, and then, you know, just enjoy watching football. Uh, I didn't go home. I ended up just staying here in Austin. Saw my family who lives here, and then uh, – you know, with my roommates who stayed home, like Hudson, everybody else went home except me and Hudson. So we just chilled, watched some college football. That's about it. You didn't go to a haunted house? No, I didn't end up going to that haunted house because I had a – I promised my friend who plays soccer that I go to a formal with her. And so that's what I did on Thursday. I wanted to go, trust me. And they were giving me a bunch of crap about it because I told them I would go. But then I promised my friend that I would go with her, and I knew that I could upset them, and they'd be all right with it. I don't want to let it down, my friend. So, no, yeah, it was a good balance. It was a good yeah. balance. You really have to like pick your poison here. It's like, which one do you want to put up with more? Who do you want to let down more? And I can, I can, I can put up with the guys in the O line room because, because we all have like our inside jokes and right. Most of the guys that, over it. yeah, they'll get them. <laughs> do you celebrate Halloween? I mean, yeah, I, I do. I don't, I mean, I did go trick or treat whenever I was little, like, uh, who did it? But, um, me, I, I mean, I, I'll, I'll probably, I'll probably get dressed up. I don't know. I mean, maybe not. Like, I'll just hang out and watch football after the game. Like. <laughs> okay. In an ideal world, and you said, who doesn't go trick or treating as a little kid? I did it. I wasn't allowed. Oh, yeah. 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 My mom is like extra religious and she was like, you're not about to dress up like ghosts and goblins and go trick or treating. You don't have to though. Like, I know. Now she realizes that maybe it was a little too deep. I mean, not only that, I don't think she felt 100% comfortable with sending me off just in the neighborhood going to people's houses. Yeah. yeah. That kind of freaked her out. Yeah, but but my, parents, my parents always went with me whenever I was there. But, you know, it's just how people see it. It is what it is. Is yeah. there any costume that's like, because, you know, as you get older, it's kind of like you see cool stuff, but you know that you don't have the energy to do it. Yeah. Is there anything that you know that you would want to be if you actually had the energy to put yourself into it? And, of course, not have a game. Well, this past week, the formal that I went to was actually like a costume formal. So I did dress up. This past well, week. Who are you? I was a blind ref. <laughs> and she was a UT football player. Okay. So. <laughs> okay. I like that. Was that kind of like shade? No, it was just some refs don't make the greatest calls. <laughs> yeah, the Big 12. <laughs> okay. I didn't, say that. I, didn't say that. I didn't say that. That was all you. That, was, that only- was me. You're right. I'll take the heat. I don't care. <laughs> they can't hurt me. Like, I don't even answer to the NCAA anymore. 
But okay, that's it. I think that's a great idea. I would love to see a picture of it if you took pictures. We can exchange it after the taping. <laughs> and maybe they can like crop it onto the video. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> Just to see something. Yeah. But moving on into the Texas versus Oklahoma State game, we won't spend a lot of time on it because, as you know, media moves on pretty quickly. The game was basically a century ago. We don't dwell on things. However, I do have to ask about an injury update because I saw that around, I think it was the, the end of the third quarter or maybe the beginning of the fourth, Derek Kersetter was moved to center. Yes. And that was concerning because, you know, I told you I have a personal connection with you guys now. So that was concerning for me. And now I need an update. Uh, so it happened in the fourth quarter. I think it was this, our second to last drive. Um, I, mean, it, I mean, it was just, it, was, it wasn't that bad of an injury. I just, I pulled on a play and I planted my foot and my knee kind of did some weird things. And, you know, I couldn't really put any pressure on it. So I had to get, get out of the game. And I ended up coming back though after that drive and uh, I mean, I'm doing really well right now and I'm going to play no matter what. So mm -hmm. um, my, my leg feels fine <clears throat> doing a bunch of treatment, um, you know, exercises to keep the muscles, you know, strong around that area. So I think you know, I'm good to go. Okay. Thank you. That gave me the comfort I needed. <laughs> I know when you first hopped in the car, you're like, I'm fine. Okay. Moving on, yeah. moving on. Jake Majors is fine. He will be at center starting at Baylor <laughs> this weekend. Here's your injury update. I feel like that's like breaking news <laughs> in a way. I mean, it was for me, but for a bye week, why do you think that bye weeks are important? I think bye weeks are important just to step away and just enjoy life, you know, because we're not just athletes, you know, we're people too. And we like to do people things, believe it or not. And so it was good. I mean, we still practiced. We still we still met with our coaches, stuff like that. But um, once the coaches went off recruiting, you know, we we had a chance to you know just step back and enjoy each other's company. You know, the guys had a chance to go to the house of torment. That was awesome. I wish I was there. Um, well, I'm, I think we're gonna go in November, so I don't feel as bad. Um, I was still here. I always thought that, like, after Halloween, everything's gone. I think it's, like, the beginning of November or something like that. Okay. But, yeah. And then, like, I got to go to a forum with my friend. Like, that was really cool. Just hanging out with other people other than, you know, football. Mm -hmm. uh, just, you know, being able to experience things other than football during the season, that's kind of important during the bye week. And also just getting your body back. Because, you know, we just went on, like, a seven-week – like straight of just games and practice, like, you know, your bodies start to hurt after a while and uh, bye week's pretty important. It absolutely is. I was still thinking that even going into the Oklahoma State game, getting there first thing in the morning, even in the pregame show, I was just kind of like, I really feel like this should have been a bye week. Looking at a lot of the other teams, they already had theirs. I'm not sure. Obviously, it's not up to you guys, but – Bye weeks are important, mm -hmm. honestly. Like getting your head back there so your head can connect with your body is absolutely an important factor. I agree. You know, and I have felt in track and field too, it's, we call it like the burnout syndrome. Like you feel like you're just burning out. Yeah. And especially with my heart coach I had at Texas, he wanted to see us every single day. No, we weren't necessarily practicing, but that became like mentally draining, <laughs> seeing yeah. the same 20 girls every single day. Yes, including Sunday. Sunday to Sunday, we saw each other. And that got to the point where it was like, okay, <laughs> I want to see somebody other than y'all. Yeah. I need to regroup, have yeah. a me day. Things like that. It helps. It helps for you to, like you said, get your body back. And I just had the interview with DeMarvion and he was telling me, I think it was DeMarvion, you know, y'all all grouped together, but he was telling me that you never really get your body back to hundred percent. Anyway, you guys are constantly playing at 95%. Yeah. So the fact that you guys haven't had a break yet, 
y'all were playing like under 95%. Now y'all are just trying to get back to that 95 and feeling like the beginning of the year. Yeah. And also just, uh, you know, physically it's draining and being mm -hmm. able to get your, you know, that physical part back is awesome. But also just mentally, because like you're saying, um, you know, it's just mentally draining seeing the people, same people every single day. And then just taking a couple of days off that like, that helps so much for, for some people. It may not help for some people, but majority of people help so much just to take a couple of days off and just do your own deal. And then you come back, you feel more energized, you know, maybe there's a little bit more motivation for some people. I don't know, but like stuff like that, like a bye week helps. And, yeah. yeah. Just to regroup a little bit. Yeah, for sure. Dang, I don't want to see y'all every single day. And I hate the ones that are like, what is this is what you signed up for? Yeah, it is, what, <laughs> it is what we signed up for, but it's it only is. a bye week, you know? Thank you. Thank you. Moving on. Baylor, what are some things that, specific things, that coach is going to have the O-line working on to improve that second half and to improve a lot of the mistakes that we saw? I would just say, question. what? I said it was a tough question. Yeah, because um, I just feel like we just need to finish all four quarters. Like everybody's saying that, you, everybody within the team, you know, we can't just be a one-half team or a three-quarter team. It has to be all four quarters, and we just can't get complacent. Mm -hmm. you know, we, so what, we have a 14-point lead. Why not make it 21? You know, just keep on adding the score. And then, you know, they get a pick six. Okay, who cares? Let's just go get the six back. Like, stuff like that. We just need to change our mindset on deals like that because um, it feels like we let what they do, to, like, defer what we're going to do. And we can't have that. And so um, we just need a clear mindset as an offensive line. You know, we can only control so much. And we can't let that anxiety or that fear of, oh, what's going to happen with them? We can't let that happen. We just have to focus on us. And that's probably like one of the key coaching points we're going to have this week is just focus on us, do our job, and let everything take care of the rest. And if something does go wrong, just keep doing your job, you know, next play at a time. Next play at a time. Yeah, Coach Sark did mention that in the press conference last week just saying you guys start to lose the game when you look at the scoreboard it's true and like you just said when they would make a good play y'all would still be thinking about that play during the next play yeah yeah that's extremely easy to do y'all have what 15 seconds <laughs> to forget about something that just happened it's mm -hmm. tough thing to do but mm -hmm. you guys make the first step y'all saw it happen Shoot, you guys even saw it again. And then now you guys are going to make the adjustments and move on. That's all you really can do, honestly. Yeah, I mean, there's no, like, secret formula to it. It's just mm -hmm. – it just comes down if, you know, if you want to play four quarters, you just can't get complacent. And if stuff happens, you can't lose your confidence because then you're just in your head and then you're not going to play the potential that you have. So Absolutely. we just got to focus on – you know, one play at a time. If things go wrong, the next play, let's make it better. So, absolutely. And it kind of feels like we're moving into like season two. Of, yeah, it does feel like that. The, like center stage with Jake Majors because it's like season two of you guys' games in a way. So, I, I wonder how like different I sound compared to my first one. Like if I've like maybe matured a little bit. You do, you did, like, you absolutely did. So I have to study you guys. I have to study these interviews, study me and just the way they are conducted. And I I'm cringing. <laughs> Not as you, it's majority me. I'm just like, God, I'm annoying. Why do we get why do we get these views? <laughs> but yeah, you should go back and like watch the first 20 seconds if you can like bear it. <laughs> Well, one thing you should know about me is I hate the sound of my voice. I hate it. On camera, like, I don't know. I'm pretty sure, like, I don't know. I think everybody hates their voice. I, think I, so def too. I definitely do. I don't like hearing it on camera, so I probably won't go watch them. <laughs> <laughs>
Okay, I'll tell you, you definitely did improve. Even after our first like three videos, you know, catch boss man was telling me, well, you really got Jake to open up. And I just kind of feel like I have this superpower now. It's like, I um, get it's Xavier just, to talk. I get Xavier Worthy to talk. It's just I'm forming friend. trust. Like it's like a, a relationship, like we're forming trust over the course of you know the season. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> but we are moving into, I'm going to call it that. I'm going to say that for all the rest of the interviews too. This is season two, episode one of basically the second half of the season. Yeah. What is your mindset moving into the second half? Uh, my mindset is just to, you know, not have any regrets with everything I do. Um, and to just give it my all, you know, there was some times where I felt like, you know, I was kind of holding back in some areas. I'm not going to be specific, but mm -hmm. you know, this second season, according to you, mm -hmm. I'm really just going to focus on um, you know, not having any regrets in anything I do, whether that's on the field, off the field. Um, you know, the time I spend, spend in this game, I'm not going to have any regrets because I know it's going to pay off. And also just playing with good confidence. I mean, um, I've been able to build confidence. Um, Ever since last year playing against K State, that's when it started. And mm -hmm. I felt like as I've gone on, um, I've been able to build more confidence. Um, and then also just trust in coaching. Uh, I don't think that's been a big issue for me, but just to continue to remind myself hey, uh, you've gotten here doing, you know, following the coaching, don't stop. Just keep on going. Yeah. So. Really dive into the deep <clears throat> thing. That's what my coach would say. You would be like, well, Serenity, you don't trust me. You tried to like overthink everything. I'm like, yeah, because I have to. I have to analyze every single part of what you're saying. But he was wanting me to like take like the leap of faith, put full trust. Like if he tells me to, you know, go out the first 200 of this, I'm just going to be like, okay. And that's a lot easier said than done, you know, because your coach usually sees things out of their athletes that you don't see yet out yeah. of yourself. Yeah. But that's the point. And that's what makes, you know, Coach Flood a great coach, Coach Sark a great coach, Coach PK a great coach. This, this I agree. They have. I agree. You just got to trust their perspective because they've been doing this for so long. Right. You know, they'll tell you, they'll tell you straight up how they feel about you. And if yeah. they continue to coach you hard, that means they know that they can get more and more out of you. So why not trust it, you know? Absolutely. Well, this is a great episode one of season two. Season two, Center Stage with Jake Majors, featuring Jake Majors, because obviously I'm your host still, Serenity Douglas. And what are they not forgetting to do? They're not forgetting to like, comment, and subscribe to the Orange Bloods Texas Football YouTube channel. Do I just end this off of like all gas, no breaks? If you want. <laughs> all gas, no breaks. Season two, that's it. Mic drop. <laughs> Thank you, Jake. Yeah, no worries.